This video is provided as supplementary material for courses taught at Howard Community College. And in this video, I want to do a few more graphs of greatest integer functions. So as a quick review, remember that the greatest integer function says that the greatest integer value for x is going to equal the greatest integer which is less than or equal to x. So in other words, if I have the greatest integer value of, let's say, 4.3, what I'm looking for is the greatest, the largest integer, which is less than or equal to 4.3. So that would be 4. Okay? Now, let's look at some graphs. In the previous video, I did a graph of f of x equals the greatest integer value for x. Let's do it for 1 half x. So I'll do a table of values, an x column and a y column, and let's start at the origin. So when x is 0, then 1 half times 0 is 0. That's an integer, so it means I can put a dot here at 0 comma 0 at the origin. If I increase the value of x, let's say I increase it to 0 0.1, then 1 half of that, 1 half of my x, is going to be 0 0.05. But I want the greatest integer value of that, so I'm going to have to drop the decimal part of it, and I'm still at 0. Same thing would happen for 0 0.2. 1 half of that is going to be 0 0.1, but I've got to drop the decimal part. Let's jump up a ways. Let's go up to uh, 0 0.9. Okay, that's going to be 0 0.45. I'm still at 0 since I've got to drop the decimal part of this. Let's go up to 1. 1 half of 1 is just 0 0.5. So if I graph these points that I've got so far, I'm just moving along the x-axis. I've got 0. As I, as I increase the x value, the y value is staying at 0. Let's go up to 1.8. Well, 1 half of 1.8 is 0 0.9, and I've got to drop the decimal part, so I'm still there. This will finally change when I get to 2 because 1 half of 2 is going to be 1, and that will allow my graph to jump up here to 2 comma 1. For the first line that I drew, I'm going to end it in a open circle to show that I'm not including the 2. If I continue this, I'm going to have to wait until I get all the way up to 4 before I can jump up again. 1 half of 4 is 2, so I'm going to have a dot here at 4, comma 2. But everything before that, like let's say at 3.9, let's see what 1 half of 3.9 is. That's 1.95. When I drop the decimal part of that, it's just 1. So I'm going to stay on this y equals 1 line all the way from 2 up to but not including 4. And then this pattern will continue. I'll stay on the y equals 2 line from 4 up to but not including 6. For the negative numbers, I can just take this pattern and work backwards. So I'm going to have a point here that starts at negative 2 comma negative 1. That's going to continue horizontally up until I get to the y-axis. I'll have another point at negative 4, comma, negative 2. That will go horizontally until I get to the point where x equals negative 2, and so on. Okay, now, you might want to take a second and think about the places where I have solid circles. In other words, the left end of each of these steps. And realize that if I connected those points, which I can't do because of the greatest integer function. But if I got rid of the greatest integer function and connected those points, I would have f of x equals 1 half x. So what I've got here is 
what would be a slope f of x equals one half x, but instead of you doing this as a slope, we're doing it as steps. Okay? Let's look at another example and see if this holds true. So let's try f of x equals the greatest integer value of 2x. So we'll fill in a table of values. When x equals 0, then 2 times 0 is 0. So once again, I can start at the origin. Let's see what happens if I can get the number inside these brackets, the value inside these brackets, to equal 1. Well, that would happen if x was equal to 1 half. So let's go here to 0 0.5. At 0 0.5, or 1 half, 1 half times 2 is 1. So I'm going to have a point here at 1 half comma 1. I just jumped up by 1 half. Let's jump up by 1 half again. When x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2. So I'll have a point here at 1 comma 2. This makes sense, I guess, because if we took away the greatest integer notation, then what I would have is f of x equals 2x. I would have a slope of 2, which is what I've got here. So knowing that this is great, a greatest integer function, I can take the points I've got so far and draw the steps in. I'll go from 0 up to, but not including, 1 half. I'll go from 1 half up to, but not including, 1 from 1 up to, but not including 1 and a half, from 1 and a half up to, but not including 2, and so on. Okay, so there I've got, oops, sorry, this is in the wrong place. There I've got that, that slope, f of x equals 2x, but I've turned the slope into a bunch of steps, and I can continue this pattern at the negative side of the graph, I'll just have the steps go downward. Okay, so you might want to take a little time and think about the relationship of this greatest integer function and the same function without the greatest integers notation. Okay, may help you understand this a little better and be able to graph it a little more quickly. Okay, I hope that helps. Take care. I'll see you next time.